have this thirst for blood. Sister, I don't know if I have the strength.
Since I can't reveal myself to my mother now, I must find a discreet spot to attend the ceremony. I can't believe I'm doing this. I have this thirst for blood. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We commend unto thy hands of mercy, most merciful Father. The soul of our sister departed, and we commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. <laughs> Why kill my Mary and stick her here in this cold, god-awful place? <laughs> These are the legal requirements for the epidemic, madam. <laughs> Avery, I feel so tired. Please take me home. Yes, madam. This is a nightmare. Jonathan, there is nothing you can do but accept it. What brings you here? I thought you could use the company. I am so sorry for your loss, Jonathan. She was a good person. Vibrant, full of life. She was kindness incarnate, my Mary. You're a good person, Jonathan. And a young Ekon. A newborn cast into the night without so much as a candle to guide your way. She had been scouring the most dangerous parts of London in search of me. And it led to her death. Jonathan, don't. I still hear her last thoughts. They echo in my head, her mind shattered, and... and it haunts me. Jonathan, stop. Listen carefully. You must come to terms with this. You must learn to live with what happened. How can I? I've destroyed my family. My poor mother. I can't even console her. Don't you see? You're doing the work of our enemies, feeding your remorse. We are weakest when we grieve, and the guilt blurs our senses. And so this is why you're here, to warn me. 
You felt this pain yourself. You too have endured this. I don't want to lose you, Jonathan. I've lost so many friends. Loved ones I cherished. Pray for Mary's forgiveness, if you must. Thank you, my lady. I will. Good. But be careful. If I found you here, others may too. What should I do then? St. Mary's Church is not far from here. Go there and make your peace. Find the solace you need. My lady wants me to confess. No, Jonathan. It's you who wants to confess, I think. And off to church he goes, a newborn seeking divine consent to lick the blood from the soft and pointy crown. Who are you? Make yourself known. Newborn, you reek of guilt and pointless compassion. Shed your skin, forget your old weaker self. What do you want from me? Ascalon does not approve of lone wolves who bring unwanted eyes to our pastures. So your name is Ascalon? <laughs> Ascalon's will is vampire law. Learn them, abide by them, or I shall return as your judge and jury. These immortals try my patience with their plans and unsolicited counsel. Steady, boy! This man stunned me with his faith, his crucifix. This is not good news. Yes? What is it that you want? I'm sorry to disturb you at such a late hour. No worries, my son. I'm still quite awake, having just returned from a funeral. Yes, I know. I've forgotten what I wanted. I don't know... May I help you, child? You seem somewhat perturbed. I haven't the strength to cross the threshold. I wish to pray, to cleanse my soul. The church is shut, 
by order of the bishop. But I'm still the vicar of St. Mary's, if that is any use to you, my son. You seem to me a good soul, vicar. But this is a personal matter. There are no secrets from God, my son. If your heart needs comfort, consider me your chapel. For I can be as silent as stone. I've words for one departed. They're not for living ears to hear. Your eyes burn with rage, yet I see the pain that lies beyond. I am here to lighten the burden of all God's creatures. Whatever you tell me is between us and the Lord. Very well, priest, as you seem quite adamant. Open your heart, my son. Tell me what burdens you. With whom do you wish to speak? She was my sister. You seem so troubled by the loss of this girl. What happened to her? She was murdered. I see. And how are you feeling, my son? I feel responsible. The pain is consuming me. I have a final question for you, my son. This is of the utmost importance. Ask your question, Vicar. What words would you like to say to your poor sister? I killed you. There's no excuse, my dear Mary. Forgive me. You have been heard, my son, and your burden will lighten if your words are sincere. Go in peace now and live your life in the way she would have wanted. There. I confessed. Do I feel better? Only time will tell. You're doing! You made me! Made me this creature! What are you? I am the land. You are our champion. You selected me! Chose me! As shall my children yet to come. What is it you seek? This age is sickly. An ancient poison, an older rage, brewed in a cauldron newly forged. This has something to do with the epidemic! Seek truth, my champion. Defeat the serpent of knowing with iron spur. I've had enough of others making decisions for me, pretending to know how I should feel or behave. So the vampire who made me is some sort of disembodied entity? Or was he just projecting this vision in my mind? <sighs> Maybe Edgar can help me with this one. City 
God protect us. You've got a leech in the hospital. Uh, yes, my hospital. My mission is to heal while you go about warring. You've set the table for a snake. I wonder why there's venom in your food. I'm growing tired of your song. You're a woodsman, McCallum, not a doctor. Return to your hunt. Remember, I've a good nose for machinations. I can flare the scent at a mile. You can't hide from the god. Leave him, Jonathan. This is sacred ground. Neutral territory. And I just had the carpet cleaned. By the sacred stole, this is very bad news. Bad news indeed. What happened? The hospital has been attacked. We have injured patients, at least one dead and several missing. This has spiraled out of control. Even the most infirm are asking to be allowed to return home. We cannot have the people lose faith in this institution. This hospital is their only hope. Of course, you're right. But we cannot afford a public scandal. It would ruin us. We must restore order, and quickly. You mentioned a dead patient. Who is he? She, Jonathan. She was Miss Harriet Jones. I found her room like a slaughterhouse. Blood everywhere. The duty nurse is taking care of the mess. Very well. I'll help you. Jonathan, please. I can't rely on anyone else. And this concerns you as it involves vampires. Someone has taken advantage of our more liberal tendencies here. In what way? Jonathan, I may turn my head when you or her ladyship indulge, but I will not allow this place to become a nest for street feeders. Please then, tell me. Sean Hampton, the man we thought we'd saved at the docks. It seems he was infected after all. So Hampton became more beast than man. Exactly. And now Guard of Prewen suspects the hospital of vampire activity. Do you realize what that could mean for us? Do you really believe they would come for us here? In such a public venue? McCullum is a fanatic. The Guard will stop at nothing. You, you don't know what they're capable of, Jonathan. Very well. Since I brought Mr. Hampton here, I will put an end to this. Sean Hampton lives and breathes for the well-being of his flock. There's no other place he would go but the docks. Believe my eyes, poor woman, butchered by some savage scowl. Yes, and I'm afraid I'm at least partially responsible. The man, the scowl, I brought him here. Jonathan, how could you say such a thing? Forgive me if I feel despondent, for there seems to be no end to the suffering and death that surrounds us. I'm always here for you, Jonathan. What do you know of Ascalon? I was threatened by a creature, a vampire in Whitechapel, stating I had to obey the law of conduct. What more can you tell me about him? He was bigger than a man, huge in fact. He seemed to radiate violence. I thought he was going to tear me apart. Then he vanished. Fergal, 
the executioner of Ascalon. You were fortunate he was not after you, but rather outdoing his master's bidding. What is Ascalon? The Ascalon Club are the most powerful vampires in Britain and exert tremendous influence. Take my advice and stay well away. I have experienced a certain difficulty when faced with holy symbols or trying to enter religious buildings. Have you? Now that's quite a question. I don't know why, but yes, it has happened to me. Aren't you frightened? Very little scares me, my dear. To be compelled to avoid symbols of faith does not concern me. Is this a sign? The hand of God in action. Are we repellent unto heaven? I don't have the answers, Jonathan. But I believe superstition and magic is just fact awaiting the lens of science. Thank you, my lady. I hope to see you again soon. Good evening, sir. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed of the Pembroke Hospital. May I be of assistance? Dr. Reed. So it's you who saved my friend Oswald. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And you are? Newton Blight. Oswald and I recently returned from the war. Why do you stay here now that Mr. Thatcher's back? It's complicated. Since the war, Oswald's been really nervous with the idea of entering any hospital. And me, I've got my own issues. Can you speak about them? Rats, sir. Even seeing one, they turn me. Just want to run. It's that fear that stopped me from going after Oswald when he left. What can you tell me about the war, Mr. Blight? If you want to speak about it, of course. War was... Well, you know, sir, the stench of death everywhere, your mates lying bleeding in the mud, just praying to make it through and get home. Bloody nightmare. Did you know Oswald Thatcher before the war? No. We met in the battlefield. I think we were in the same boat to France. We've stuck together ever since. I fought in France, too. I served as a field surgeon, but it was not uncommon to repel an assault, especially at night. Yeah. The first time I was wounded, I had to protect the infirmary from hostiles. Twice. You are always welcome at the Pembroke Hospital. As a former officer, I'll be honored to welcome a fellow veteran. I'm not giving up on bringing Oswald back to the hospital. I just need to convince him that he needs some help. Perhaps he needs to reach that decision by himself. Could you speak to him? He doesn't usually listen to doctors, but perhaps because you've been through it, you can talk him round. What caused your phobia of rats, Newton? It happened last year following an artillery attack. I was trapped for two days in a hole under two dead soldiers. And there were rats. Go on. They started eating me as soon as I dozed. Gnawing at my ears, my fingers, lips. I couldn't move. I couldn't call for help. I see. No, you don't. You have no idea what it is to wake up buried under bodies. Fucking vermin eating your flesh. Oswald, he found me and saved me. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself.
Are you all right, sir? What are you doing in a place like this? I'm not sure that's any of your business. I hope you realize that staying here will put your life at great risk. Pah! I'm not afraid of these guards of Prewen, or whatever these thugs call themselves. I can still kick some respect into those youngsters. I wasn't specifically referring to them, but are you really after these men? Why? They took my boy! I've had no news since he joined that crazy gang. So I decided to come and find him myself, to get some answers. I see. But as I said, your life is at risk if you stay here. And I'm not referring to the gangs either. You should leave, sir. Well, this part of town used to be nicer, let's say. Perhaps you're right. This isn't the best way to save Andrew. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions. Or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburne, if you must know. What can you tell me about this part of town? A shithole filled with maggots. Liars and thieves, all of them. Are you thinking about someone in particular? No. Nope. Hate them all. Especially these petty, whining little shitbag beggars. Is there no one who deserves your leniency, then? Well, Tom from our local is somewhat of a decent bloke. At least, unlike most maggots, he knows how to listen without opening his trap. What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. It's what I do. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience, appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. Any chance you can help me find Sean Hampton? The sad saint. Why would you talk to that cunt? Actually, that's confidential. Really? Well, go ask someone else then. I'm sure Tom Watts will gladly answer you. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Mark my words, miss. These murders are the work of a vampire. A vampire? Whatever do you mean? Not a, a drop of blood left in his body. This is the work of a vampire. You 
Best be off to you. Comes a problem as to solve one. Something can be done to get out of this. Good evening, sir. Whatever. Don't you recognize me? We met a few nights ago. Don't take it personally. I spent a lot of energy forgetting what I did the night before. Yes, you had definitely drunk too much then as well. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm Dyson Delaney. I'll try to remember you this time. Inebriation aside, do you need medical help? Yes. I feel sicker than usual these days. Take this, then. And perhaps you could try to slow down the alcohol intake, too. Hey, Doc, you don't really want me to stop the only remedy I can afford. What do you do for a living, Mr. Delaney? I drink. I drink in the morning and at noon. I drink at night. And then I drink some more. Why do you drink so much? Maybe it's because I prefer dying slowly. Death can be so abrupt. Personally, I like to see mine coming at my own pace. You sound very sad, sir. That's because I am, Doc. Don't you work at all? I'd love to, but I don't have the time. Didn't I tell you? Drink in the morning and at noon. I'll drink at night. Is there anything in particular that you like about this part of town? Except for the cheap drinks, I mean. How dare you say such a thing? I love this neighborhood. So friendly, so joyful. Why are you so cynical? Cynicism is the polite way to express despair, Doctor. No reason at all to rejoice, then? Life is hopeless and then we die, is that it? Let me tell you a story. All right. Go on. A few years ago, when I believed a resolute man could change things around here for good, a tragedy occurred nearby. What kind of tragedy? It was a bomb. A bomb that exploded and killed many people. Metal and blood everywhere. Shouts. Fire. Broken window of the shoe shop. The torn street light. You lost people you loved that day, didn't you? I've lost everything. But you know what the worst part is? I don't even remember where it happened. I've drunk so much to forget it. And now I can't remember where it was. I can't pay my homage to the dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Delaney. It's okay. If you ever find the place, just... Leave a flower for me there. Even if you tell me where it is, I'm not sure I'd memorize it. Surely you must have had dreams and expectations when you were young, like everybody else. Sure. I wanted things to change. To really change, and to change for good. The bigger the dream, the harder the fall. Sounds like you were an idealist, which is honorable. No, sir. I was an anarchist and I believe that exclusive property is a robbery in nature. I wanted a new world to rise from the ashes, Dr. Reed. Do you really think the world is that bad? No, I believe we all can choose to make it better. But most of us are too weak, too corrupt and too guilty. I failed for sure, but others will come. I want to know more about your past as an anarchist, Dyson. I'm still an anarchist, Doctor. Make no mistake. I just reject violence as a tool to change the world, unlike my comrades. 
Do you still see your comrades, then? Even if you don't agree with their methods anymore, I mean. No. I hope they'll come to share my point of view one day. I'll raise my glass to that splendid idea. Do you believe in a bloodless revolution, then? I do not believe in much anymore, Doctor. But I'll admit I like your idea of peaceful change. I like it a lot. I'm looking for Mr. Sean Hampton. Do you know where I could find him? I really don't know. I heard he'd been abducted. I don't know if he's back. Who could tell me then? About the sad saint. I'll try asking Tom Watts about him. Goodbye, Mr. Delaney. Are they stupid or something? I should have offered a drink to the boy. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, sir. How are you tonight? Back to the docks, are we? You remember me, then? Of course I do. You're that man who seemed so lost when he entered my bar a few nights ago. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm Jonathan Reed, by the way. Uh, I'm still Tom Watts. Welcome back, Doctor. Sabrina seems very fond of you, Tom. I like her too. I really do. I know I'm her boss, and I'm much older and all. But I like her, for sure. What is bothering you, then? Sabrina is an angry one. She wears it like a coat. I'm not sure I can make her shed that anger. It hurts to see her like that. Tom, I need to find Sean Hampton as quickly as possible. I've been told you could help me. I heard the sad saint was recovering at Pembroke Hospital. Did he leave or something? I believe he returned to his flock. Can you confirm that? Oh, I bet you're right. Sean can't help but worry about the poor and sick. Oh, I guess it has something to do with what happened to him as a baby. Please, tell me. Well, I don't like to gossip, but I heard that the sad saint was abandoned as a baby in front of a Catholic orphanage in Dublin. That would explain his faith and need to help everyone. The important thing is I find him. Quickly. Uh, why not try his night asylum? He takes care of those who need a meal or a roof there. Where is it? It's in an old warehouse, northwest of here. Just follow the bank to the west and go north when you reach the end of the pier. Goodbye, Mr. Watts. Good evening, sir. Have you witnessed any suspicious activity or strange events recently? And what do you define as a strange event? More to the point, who are you? My name is Ichabod Throgmorton, vampire hunter extraordinaire and warden of the East End. A vampire hunter? <laughs> really? I know what you're thinking. I'm just another lunatic howling at the moon, but I'm not. The bloodsuckers exist. And they're close. Mr. Throgmorton, I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'd like to hear more about these vampires you're hunting. A man of science? Well, I'll be glad to enlighten you. What can you tell me about this neighborhood? Did you hear about what happened to Jack Gillingham? Poor boy. It's a shame I wasn't around to protect him. It's impossible to protect everyone. The violence seems endemic in this part of town. But it's my duty. I am convinced Jack Gillingham was killed by a vampire. These evil rodents are spreading like a plague. So, how exactly are you protecting these people? I'm curious. I patrol late at night, investigating anything unusual. I try and encourage people to stay indoors, but people are careless. Can I help in any way? Actually, yes. 
I plan to put up posters to alert the population to the vampire threat. Are you asking me to paste posters about vampires around the docks? If you wouldn't mind. If you did that, then I can focus on my patrols. How do you identify a vampire? It's simple, really. They can't stand daylight. They're afraid of garlic and holy symbols. And they also cannot enter a house without being invited. Have you ever killed one of these creatures? Yourself, I mean. Of, of course I have. What kind of question is that? It's a dirty business, believe me. Have you heard of the Guard of Prewan? Of course. They're dedicated hunters. A little militant for my taste, but they do let anyone join. <laughs> Were you ever tempted to join the Guard yourself? I did think about it, but I'm more of a silent hunter. They're more of a sanitary militia. So you hunt alone? That sounds... Risky. Vampires are just like every other predator. They hunt when they're hungry and follow certain patterns. It's just a matter of observation and patience. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me, Mr. Throgmorton? The sad saint? He should be at his night asylum at this hour. But I cannot tell you how to find it, sorry. Really? Why is that? It's nothing personal, Doctor. I'm sure your intentions are good, but people who sleep there... ...they have plenty of reasons to hide. I could make you tell me, but I respect your refusal. You really believe Sean is a saint, don't you? All I will say is this. Gossip has it that when he was a child... ...he was molested. ...by a priest of all people. Funny thing is, though, it only strengthened his faith. Maybe at least you can tell me who could help me find him. Tell you what, go and chat with Tom Watts. He's a... Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton.
The wounds on this corpse are deep, the result of rabid rage. If this is Sean's doing, he's become a murderous beast. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. May I have your attention for a minute? Good evening, sir. My name is Giselle Paxton, but I don't have time for men like you. Have we met before? No, but I just need to look at your fancy clothes to know that you must be desperate to visit the docks at night. That's quite judgmental of you. Sir, I've led enough strikes when I had a job to identify you as an enemy of the working class. May I ask what you do for a living? I'm killing myself scraping for a living. And you? Have you ever had to struggle in your entire life? As I told you, I'm a doctor. You have to work a lot to earn that title. Oh, a doctor. Hmm, born with money in a nice house, were we? Was Daddy a banker or a doctor himself? Why such hatred? Are you judging me by my clothes and my job? Of course I am. Fuck, you're so blind. You don't even see your privilege. Lazy people like you disgust me. What can you tell me about this vicinity? Tell you what. Just spend a few weeks here, and then ask me that question again. If you're still alive, I mean. You don't know me, Miss Paxton, and yet you see me as an enemy. Oh, your manners, your clothes, your words tell me everything about you, sir. I know your kind, and you don't belong here. You're right. I have never suffered from poverty. But that doesn't mean I don't fight it and its consequences. I really doubt you ever had to fight for anything in your life, Dr. Reed.
I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me? What is it you want? Does he owe you money? Has he displeased the Royal Highness? I'm no snitch, Mr. Fancy Pants. Well, I'll leave you for now. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Can I help you? A fancy doctor lurking at night by the docks? <laughs> Not fishy at all. And what about you? Working outside at night in this dangerous part of town? You want to know my secret? I'm trying to earn money. And I'm Lottie Paxton, by the way. I'm looking for Sean Hampton. Can you help me? Mr. Hampton must be in his office at the night asylum he manages, I suppose. Why do you want to see him? He was a patient of mine at the Pembroke Hospital, but he left abruptly. I see. Well, Mr. Hampton is a discreet and dedicated man. I'm sure you'll find him soon enough. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Why the long face, Doctor? It looks like we both have changed a lot. I must confess, it saddens me, Sean. Put your faith in the Lord, Doctor. He has a plan for all of us. We may not always see it, but he does. Since you left Pembroke, the amount of blood that has been shed, it's hard to believe you, Sean. Ask what you will. As the Lord is my shepherd, I will not speak a lie to you. Aren't you afraid of what you've become? We are blessed, Doctor. Can't you see it? The Lord has made us able to walk amongst the plague and aid those that need it. Do you think this is a blessing when God's own house and holy symbols repel you? If that is your burden, Doctor, so be it. But I do not fear the cross, nor am I forced to take the life of another. My kind doesn't share your imperfections. But you must drink blood now to survive. No, not your scripture. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So saith the Lord. I only need to eat flesh, no blood. Why return here? This is my home. These people are my flock. You will always find me where I am needed. Wonders never cease. Scowl managing an asylum. And what of you? A vampire doctor. Meals laid out before you. Yet you restrain. And what about William Bishop? He tried to take care of you. But this hunger, this thirst, cannot be restrained. Alas, poor William. He had a good soul, but was weak in spirit. He could not shake the thirst for booze, never mind blood. But have faith. My will is far stronger than his. Why did you kill Miss Jones at the Pembroke Hospital? Killed old Harriet? You must be mad, Doctor. Why would I do such a thing? But you were close to her. Of course. But she was lost. Separated from the fold. She did not see the hand of the Divine in my blessed condition. So you claim Miss Jones' death was not by your hand, nor the other incidents at Pembroke? Though Harriet was an angry, spiteful woman, she was one of God's creatures. I have nothing but love for all he has made. People have been murdered. I've seen the blood. I don't believe you can be trusted. Have a little faith, Doctor. If you will follow, I will guide you to the light. How do you plan to do that? Take this key of the old sewers. The entrance is by the river bank, south from here. There you'll find all the proof you need. Very well. You have definitely intrigued me. 
I hope you're right, Sean. I'll be here when you return. If you still think I'm a threat then, well, I'll surrender myself to your judgment. Locked, all right. So that's it. These wheels control the water level.
is despicable. These maggots have escaped the wrath of Ascalon for too long. It is time to purge the sewers of their filth. You again. The one they call the Sewer Dog. Hold your tongue, newborn, or I'll crush you like a maggot. You've let the beast consume you. Finally! A touch of lucidity. You shall learn to respect the laws of Ascalon. You dare challenge the dictates of Ascalon. Whence do you vanish? The slaughter of these scalds was singing your name. to the pit foolish echon blood ah! is now mine return to your apothecary at need ah! and it shall snap like a hair's brittle bones new boy At least one skull escaped Fergal's wrath. The poor creature is bleeding to death. He cannot be far. isn't the blood of a vampire, but it will quench your thirst. This is our domain, not yours. You've been warned. Wait, I saved you from this creature. That must count for something. Thank you. Now go. Go back to the streets and houses. There is no love lost between us, vampire. But thank you. Sean Hampton sent me here. I believe he wanted me to find you. Who are you? If you must know, they call me Old Bridget. 
And this shelter is where we live. I'm Jonathan Reed. I'm a newborn Econ. I'm afraid I'm not sure what's going on. I shall not bend a knee, young Econ, but I sense your pain. Ask, and I will afford you my attention. Why was that creature after you? Fergal is the blunt instrument of the Ascalon Club. His masters would see us dead or turned into slaves if they had their way. What the hell was that thing? He wasn't an Ekon or a Skull. They are known as Volkhod, an ancient offshoot of immortals. Blood drives them, enrages them. What of this Ascalon Club? Vampire society's elite in the Empire. They make the rules and enforce their judgment upon us whom they see as lessers. So is it you that Sean Hampton sent me to find? Perhaps. The sad saint was always kind to us. He must trust you if he revealed our location. The guard of Prewan is hunting him. He is suspected of murder. The Skulls have always been hunted by humans and vampires alike. I teach them how to survive against the odds. Sean killed a patient of mine. And that's just one of the murders he's being hunted for. If you refer to Harriet, she is now among us and under our protection. Harriet Jones is alive. That's it. That's the proof Sean wanted me to find. I must talk to her. No. Harriet is not alive. But you can speak to her. I must warn you. She is fragile and may not receive you warmly. I don't understand. She is filled with bile and hate. Her mind is sharp as a tack. But her body is so weak. I've never seen its like before. She is resting in a room on the far right of this hideout. Thank you. I will bear that in mind. We're at your mercy. Will you end us? Your place is not here. Hello, Harriet. Do you recognize me? Hmm, yes. You were from the Pembroke Hospital. The young doctor. So full of secrets. I have so many questions I need to ask you, Harriet. If you would. I love questions. As for the answers, you may not like them. How do you feel? I can't see. I can't move. My body's burning. I feel as if I'm dying over and over again. Have you tried to eat or drink something? People here tried to feed me, but I'm just not hungry. I don't have the strength. Your room. The blood. What brought you to fake your death in such a gruesome fashion? To see if I would be mourned. Why flee with Sean Hampton? Oh, it's always a pleasure to see a saint fall to sin. But the coward still won't kill. Do you take pleasure in causing so much pain and sorrow? Nobody gave a damn about me. Not a tear shed. Poor Harriet. Always the discarded.
Why did you come here? And why not? This is where I live now. Oh, you'd leave me be. Will you respect old Bridget's wishes? Will you obey her? Bridget is kind. She only needs to keep me fed and I'll be good. So you desire to stay here? Yes. I'm with my own kind. Birds of a feather, so to speak. Poor Harriet. Always alone. I have a question of the utmost importance to ask. Will you answer? Questions, questions, questions. The good doctor, always searching for answers. Do you remember what you did after leaving the hospital? Did you kill anyone? First, a question from me. You answer first. Very well, then. What do you want to know? Are you like me? Are you also dead? We are not dead, Harriet. Death no longer pertains to us. We are different. I like what I am. I truly do. I relish the pain that courses through me. I know you fled the hospital with Sean Hampton. Did you or Sean kill anyone in your flight? Anyone? Try and remember. I will not lie. I wanted blood and I wanted revenge and Sean pulled me from it. Brought me here instead. But the shadows heard my prayers. The shadows killed that bastard. Who was that man? The one murdered in the street? He used to be my landlord. I lived here for many years before falling ill. Oh, he was an awful man. Disgusting and cruel. So cruel. You sought vengeance by your own hand, and someone else obliged you. Very convenient. Don't lie to me. I don't lie. I saw him near the docks. And rightly, I wished him dead. And I am happy he is. It's true. But I didn't kill him. I was too tired. Shadows? Tell me what you saw. The shadows. They heard me and answered. Something in the deep darkness. Quick. Deadly. It asked me if I wanted revenge. I answered, yes. And these shadows, this presence, do you still hear it? Was it a vampire? Did Sean see it? It spoke only to me. And now it is silent. But it is born of hatred. <laughs> and it will kill again. And it hates you, Doctor. Oh, it hates you. What makes you say that? It... It whispered your name, Dr. Reed. It wanted to know who you were and where you went. Questions about me? What did you say? Nothing, Doctor. I said nothing. There was nothing it didn't already know. Oh, I'm tired now. Let me rest. Have you found the answers you were looking for, young Ekon? There is too much left unanswered. So many questions. Get to know us. Spend time with us. And I may be willing to answer more questions. Why do you live here? Amongst the filth and vermin? Live. Here we hide. Why don't you leave the city? Hide somewhere far from the guard of Prewan, the Ascalon Club. We are the Sewer Skulls. This is our domain. We have run as far as we can, and now we hide. What are you hiding from? From the guilt, the shame, 
from the hunters and the light. And of course, our past. Your diction, your words. You do not carry yourself like most skulls I've encountered. True. I'm not like most skulls. You were once someone else. What happened to you? It is as sad as it is long, young Ekon, but it will remain mine. Can I be of service to you? We ask but one thing. Reveal to no one our secrets. Do not betray us. For how long have you been in hiding here? Skulls have been hiding under London since vampires first entered the city. Where did you hide before the sewers? We claimed ancient tunnels, forgotten caverns, catacombs. We are skulls, groveling beneath the feet of our makers. What manner of creature is Harriet? She is different from everyone else. I really don't know. I'm not even certain she is a skull. I've no idea as to what blood made her. What is a skull, in fact, in your honest opinion? The progeny of a vampire, disavowed by her maker. Perhaps a fruitless branch of a noble tree. A word used to enslave us. I cannot say. You mentioned that vampire blood has tremendous potency. You believe it to be stronger than your own? Oh, the vampire's sweet blood. That rich, dark wine that we crave. For it made us, and it can sustain us. I thank you for your time, madam. I must go back to Sean Hampton now. Your kindness has been ample payment, Ekon. To protect us, I'll close the access to our hideout, but you can use our shortcut to reach Mr. Hampton's shelter. Just follow the arrows. Thank you, old Bridget. I hope we'll meet again. It's locked. Welcome back, Dr. Reed. Would you like to take communion with me now? Sean, are you eating raw flesh? the sacred flesh of the mortal lamb. Our Lord's bountiful transmutation for the sustenance of his believers. Thank you, Lord. I am your most humble servant. So, true to your word, you waited for my return. I told you, Dr. Reed, I was a man to be trusted. Did you have words with the poor Harriet?
You make no distinction between the living and the skulls, do you? We are God's children, Dr. Reed. One and all. And he's determined to save us. What will be the result if you continue to assist both Skulls and the living? For the last decade, that's what's been happening. And they found a better life. What's to change? You're forgetting the epidemic. Things can go south very quickly. I've seen it. Oh, these are terrible times. Only those pure of heart shall prevail. You've turned Skull now. Don't you see the danger to anyone giving you their trust? We are all sinners, awaiting salvation. This is a simple truth, ordained by the Lord Almighty. I am a seeker of his glorious light. Does this place belong to you? How can you be so certain you can keep it open? This warehouse was once property of the Dawson family, but has been bequeathed me through donation. The Dawsons? The wealthiest family in London? Have they a clue as to what goes on here? Not at all. The donation was made before the war. The building was run down. I never met Aloysius Dawson myself. So you have the run of the place, and no one's taken notice? As long as we keep to ourselves, we interest no one. This is a haven, and I pray it remains so for eons to come. Harriet, Miss Jones has been behaving in a most violent manner. She's going to need special attention. <sighs> That's precisely the reason I brought her here. To meet old Bridget. She's the guide Harriet requires. Who is this old Bridget? I don't know, Doctor. She rarely speaks of her past, but I know she has a long one. She's likely the oldest soul in the city. Harriet is possessed by her hatred. You cannot let her roam free. She's dangerous. She has joined her own client, Doctor. Old Bridget is a saint to the younger Skulls, guiding them to salvation and peaceful existence. I believe I've learned all I need to know. I'm certain you've killed no one, but one day I believe you'll cross the line. <sighs> Logic is a false prophet. Faith is the only path to salvation. What do you mean? We have been blessed with God's eternity. We are the instruments of his divine will. We shall feed the hungry forever and ever. Amen. Let's simply agree that all are one and the same. In death, I mean. Give yourself over to God, Doctor. Expel your urges and kneel before the Lord in praise. These urges. You know the hunger will never be satisfied. I've come to embrace the everlasting craving. I have sworn to feed only upon the flesh of the dead. It is now my sacrament. Take, eat. This is my body. So saith the Lord.
My discoveries. Vampire blood would enhance your metabolism, perhaps even heal you. If what old Bridget says is true, I'll give you some of mine. I, I'd rather not. It would be extremely awkward. You have no choice, Sean. It's the only way to protect your chapel. Those still amongst the living. No, Dr. Reed. God made me this way. Who am I to disobey his will? You believe that God's plan was for you to be abandoned at birth? <sighs> the Lord works in mysterious ways. I can't imagine God intended for you to be molested by a priest in an orphanage. Drink, friend. No. I said, kneel and drink. Now! Another corpse thrown in the streets. Someone's playing a very sick game. I know this brooch. This is my mother's. A birthday gift from father. Twenty-nine Pretty Orchard Street. That's near Poplar's district. Why would this man carry off my mother's brooch? I must go there. 